Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Guillermo Cornejo, who is the founder and CEO of Riders Share, the largest motorcycle sharing platform in the world. Guillermo, welcome to the program. Thanks, Mike. Hey, so um, I love the concept of what uh, your company does with uh, rider sharing and motorcycles. So I want to get into that and learn all about uh, your company. But give us a little bit of background. Um, what uh, what led you to then start this type of business as opposed to many other types of businesses out there using motorcycles? Yes. So I had a motorcycle and I didn't use it that often, only on the weekends and to financial reasons, I had, you know, I couldn't, there was a point in time in which I didn't own a motorcycle and I wanted to ride motorcycles, but I could not afford to buy one. And so I looked into renting and that's when I discovered that renting a motorcycle, you know, in the old school way costs over $200 per day. And so I figured there has to be a better way to, to, to do it. And so, we're, yeah, we ride their share we cut the cost of renting a motorcycle by over 60% by getting rid of brick and mortar and by using technology. You know, it's, um, it, it, you, 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 I'm sure you watch Shark Tank, you know, religiously as I do, and you hear that type of story so many times, which is, boy, I sure would like to do this, but it wasn't available, so I created that. And so that's just such a neat lead in, um, you know, that you noticed a problem in the industry because you experienced it yourself. And probably you didn't even envision fully the, the whole writer share program from the outset. It just kind of started taking life. Um, so how did you start realizing that this could be a viable business? Well, I did a lot of research. Um, yeah. I uh, looked at statistics, found, for example, that the average motorcycle rider puts 3,000 miles per year on their motorcycle, which is nothing compared to cars. People are averaging 12,000 miles in a car. So I'm not, I wasn't the only person out there that only using their motorcycle for fun on the weekend. And, uh, and so this this actually is something where the there's there's the the weekend aspect, but then um, what about during the week? So it makes me wonder about the restaurants. You know, you'll do a big promotional special for Tuesday afternoon because that's your dead time. So you're mentioning weekends being typically when people would ride a bike. Are you looking to help um, a bike owner fill in the times where during the week maybe they're not using it so someone else would need that? Well, the thing is, most motorcycle owners that on the platform have multiple motorcycles or also have a car. Yeah. So their motorcycle seats underutilized weekends and weekdays. <laughs> Got it. So, um, so most of our customers, on the other hand, are people that are traveling from out of town and don't have their own motorcycle with them. So, oh, yeah. And most people travel during the weekends, right? And so that's why, generally speaking, it's, uh, it's more of a, hey, I don't use my bike that often. It's more like a toy that I use every now and then. And I'm sure, why not turn a depreciating asset into an investment? Yes. And, and so, for instance, it sounds to me like this is Airbnb for motorcycles, right? It's exactly what it is. So if I were in, and I don't ride a motorcycle, I've got a um, ATV. We ride a, out the dirt, so I'm not a street bike rider. But I would assume that if I owned a motorcycle and was interested in your program, um, from a bike owner standpoint. I would wonder, hey, how about this person that might not treat my bike um, well or maybe return it with damage? What is, what is the thought process there and how do you um, uh, answer that question or help people feel comfortable? Uh, well, risk management is our competitive advantage. We use 
uh, machine learning, we capture hundreds of data points about each transaction in order to predict the probability that the person renting your motorcycle is going to crash. And if that probability is too high, we, you, you know, we, we turn them away in, through various means. Then, huh. you know, we, we also have, yeah, we, we have all kinds of legal uh, documents to protect the owner against potential lawsuits arising from an accident, you know, such as liability waivers, uh, arbitration clauses, and, you know, all kinds of, we cross all our teeth to make sure that our owners are uh, financially protected when they rent out their motorcycles on ridership. That is a competitive advantage, and probably if if you when you dig in deep and show that technology to a bike owner, that would make the, just really open their eyes and make them realize, boy, that really is something where you're protecting the owner and going to bat for them to make sure that a reckless person is you know, most you know anything can happen, but you're you're mitigating that risk. I really like how that that sounds uh, from the owner's standpoint. Um, Let's flip it around to the rider standpoint. You mentioned maybe people are traveling on a business trip or a personal trip and they go, hey, I've got a afternoon free. I'd like to go take a ride on the parkway or up in the mountains. So let, I've heard about this program. And and now they think from the rider's perspective, now they're going to come to uh, rider share. And are they going to spend half a day doing paperwork and they're going to get there and find there's two bikes and not much variety? Um, what, what is what is in it for the rider's perspective? For the rider, you know, we have the largest variety of motorcycles for rent in the world. So you can choose from a BMW, a Ducati, a Harley, a Vespa, or even a, a Ural motorcycle with a sidecar or those new Canon spiders with three wheels, right? We have all kinds of bikes listed on the platform. And once the owner approves your booking, uh, you're, you're pretty much guaranteed to get that bike. It, it is not like a car rental where, you know, you, you book uh, an SUV, but suddenly you get a, a Toyota Corolla because, yeah. you know, the SUVs are low in inventory. No, one of the advantages of either show is that you get what you pay for and, uh, and with motorcycles, that's very important. It's uh, because you're really paying for an experience, not for moving from point A to point B, right? Yeah. And and so, for instance, if I were a writer looking, hearing about this, thinking this sounds really neat, I'm going to try it out, maybe even on my next trip, does there need to be a certain amount of time ahead of the trip that you contact you guys and go to your website and make sure everything's taken care of? Or can you go on and in a short period of time, have everything checked out and insurance and ready to go? What is the time frame that way? What should people expect? So some owners allow their bikes to be rented instantly. And so about 25% of our bikes, you can, uh, there's an instant book button on them. And uh, so we can, um, we can take last minute rentals. With that said, um, it's preferable if those, you know, you book the motorcycle a few days in advance. That way the owner has more time to, to make sure that, you know, the trip works with their calendar. And, yeah. um, and also we find that people that plan ahead and book motorcycle trips in advance are less likely to crash. And so yeah. our, trip, our trip fees are a little lower if you book ahead of time. And, and that's probably one of the little hidden algorithms in your technology where if you're booking it last minute, there is that tendency that maybe your spur of the moment, your personality might be, you know, uh, um, reflexive or, or um, uh, spur of the moment where maybe there would be risks, extra risk taken. So I would think that that's a, a really good point. While it is available, it's probably preferable for someone to give a day or two or more notice. So all the paperwork and checks and balances can be, be put into place. Correct. Uh, we find that, you know, impulsive people, risk takers are more likely to crash than even, say, a beginner rider. Yeah. Yeah. And so, it, it, you know, kind of learning a little bit more about your company, it from the corporate standpoint, it sounds very similar to Uber, where 
you know, Uber doesn't own all those uh, uh, vehicles. Well, you don't own all the bikes. You're just facilitating the exchange, and you've got such a large network that a rider can have a huge variety of selections. So I, I really think that's a neat disruptive technology uh, approach to your to your business with motorcycles. Thank you. It works really well with motorcycles because uh, people tend to only ride, you know, people prefer to ride when the weather is nice during the summer. And so traditional brick and mortar shops, they're forced to raise prices and they run out of inventory during the summer because everyone wants to ride. And they, so they have to do that to be able to survive the winter because we use, you know, existing inventory and, and we use people's houses instead of brick and mortar locations. Yeah. We don't have to offset significant winter costs. We, you know, we just press it. The, the owner sets their own prices, and uh, and we go from there. You know, you bring up a good point about kind of seasonality. And like I mentioned with restaurants, there's certain days of the week that is busier or not as busy. So, what yeah. is your business do like now and future plans to compensate for that seasonality? Because in the winter, maybe you're not getting people wanting to book motorcycles as much because of weather conditions. So what do your, what do you do to compensate for that and smooth that out? And what are your future plans looking forward for that reason and beyond? <laughs> well, one way we can smooth this nails in the U S is by expanding into the other hemisphere, <laughs> like Australia, South Africa, Argentina, where you find great motorcycle routes, but that's still not enough probably to compensate it as an alley. So yeah. uh, another way, uh, we're considering expanding into off-road power sports, so think snowmobiles. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're dipping our toes uh, slowly, first with dirt bikes, then with ATVs and UTVs. And if that works out, we'll, we'll take the risk with snowmobiles too. Is, is, have you done some research? Because um, I, would, I would wonder if – statistically there's a certain percentage of people who own a motorcycle might also own a winter type um, um, vehicle like a snowmobile so so that might be an easy way for you to launch into that is that is there some statistics that way um, p potentially yes uh, roughly 20 percent of people that own motorcycles also own a off-road power store power sports vehicle yeah yeah, that would make uh, it would make sense, and I would think that that would be a uh, the next natural uh, step as well. Um, so, so let's talk a little bit about from the perspective of the the rider. Um, you know, it's the experience. Um, do you, do you find that your uh, riders are wanting um, longer day trips, or are they just using it to get around town? Um, what do you What does your company do to provide? for the rider's experience, like, you know, hey, here's the best, you know, highway trails to ride or, you know, anything like that? That's a good question. So people are typically going on, uh, you know, longer road trips, uh, averaging three days and uh, about uh, 300 to 400 miles. And in, to help with experience, we have a log that uh, has – we have basically aggregated the best motorcycle routes in, 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 in around 60 major cities in the U.S. And, and, and yeah, so uh, we, in the future, we're also thinking about allowing the owners to provide uh, tours to our customers, you know, because they, you know, they know better than anyone what the best roads are. Yeah. Yeah, so so now you're getting the owners it potentially involved in, hey, here's uh, great places in our area. You know, you're coming to Denver, you're going to wherever. So I think that's a really neat thing because who better to learn from than the owner of the bike that takes it out every other weekend up to this area or that area? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's really neat. Plus, uh, well, I, I yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of our owners are also like looking for new riding friends, right? And so yeah. as it is, they're already doing that. They're already riding with their customers. So I, we see it as a natural progression. 
Well, probably if you were mentioning research and statistics, there's probably a large percentage of people that own a bike own more than one. So if that's the case, maybe, you know, they get talking to the person and, you know, uh, you know, even if it's a couple days ahead of time and they're like, oh, you're from California coming to Denver and um, here's a great place to ride. By the way, I'll come with you and I'll show you. And, and I think that really um, builds that community feel, too. Exactly. That's what we're striving that's pretty, for. That's pretty huge. Yeah, that's not just here's the bike, give me your money, be safe, have a nice trip. It's now fostering this experience and community within the rider, the riders, um, both both the owner and the and the rider. Yes. Well, I love it. I think that's so neat, Guillermo. And I uh, just wonder at this point, just uh, let's wrap up with what's the best way that uh, someone can go to your site, learn more about um, as a rider or a bike owner, and learn more about uh, Rideshare. Yes, our website is www.riders-share.com. Excellent. And I will make sure to put that in the show notes so that people have a direct link. And I really appreciate your time coming on. It was wonderful learning about your company. Thank you very much for having me, Mike. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.